On January 23rd, we commemorate the higher martyr Clement, Bishop of Ancyra, and martyr Agathangelus, Venerable Gennadius of Kostroma, the translation of the relics of St. Theoctistus, Archbishop of Novgorod, Venerable Mausimas the Syrian, Venerable Salomonus the Silent of Euphrates, St. Paulinus the Merciful, Bishop of Nola, the commemoration of the Holy Fathers of the Sixth Ecumenical Council, and the Synaxis of the Saints of Kostroma. The Hiram Martyr Clement was born in the Galatian city of Ancyra in the year 258 of a pagan father and a Christian mother. He lost his father when he was an infant and his mother when he was twelve. She predicted a martyr's death for him because of his belief in Christ. A woman named Sophia adopted him and raised him in the fear of God. During a terrible famine in Galatia, several pagans turned out their own children, not having the means to feed them. Sophia took in these unfortunates and fed and clothed them. St. Clement assisted her with this. He taught the children and prepared them for baptism. Many of them died as martyrs for Christ. St. Clement was made a reader and later a deacon. When he was 18, he was ordained to the Holy Priesthood, and at age 20, he was consecrated Bishop of Ancyra. Soon afterwards, the persecution against Christians under Diocletian 284-305 broke out. Bishop Clement was denounced as a Christian and arrested. Domitian, the governor of Galatia, tried to make the saint worship the pagan gods, but St. Clement firmly confessed his faith and valiantly withstood all the tortures. They suspended him on a tree and raked his body with sharp iron instruments so that his entrails could be seen. They smashed his mouth with stones, and they churned him on a wheel and burned him over a low fire. The Lord preserved his sufferer and healed his lacerated body. Then Domitian sent the saint to Rome to the emperor Diocletian himself with the report that Bishop Clement had been fiercely tortured, but had proven unyielding. Diocletian, seeing the martyr completely healthy, did not believe the report and subjected him to even crueler tortures, and then had him locked up in prison. Many of the pagans, seeing the bravery of the saint and the miraculous healing of his wounds, believed in Christ. People flocked to St. Clement in prison for guidance, healing, and baptism, so that the prison was literally transformed into a church. When word of this reached the emperor, many of these new Christians were executed. Diocletian, struck by the amazing endurance of St. Clement, sent him to Nicomedia to his co-emperor Maximian. On the ship, the saint was joined by his disciple Agathangelus, who had avoided being executed with the other confessors, and who now wanted to suffer and die for Christ with Bishop Clement. The emperor Maximian, in turn, sent Saints Clement and Agathangelus to the governor Agrippina, who subjected them to such inhuman torments that even the pagan onlookers felt pity for the martyrs and they began to pelt the torturers with stones. Having been set free, the saints healed an inhabitant of the city through the laying on of hands and they baptized and instructed people, thronging to them in multitudes. Arrested again on orders of Maximian, they were sent home to Ancyra, where the ruler Cyrenius had them tortured. Then they were sent to the city of Amasia to the proconsul Demetrius, known for his great cruelty. In Amasia, the martyrs were thrown into hot lime. They spent a whole day in it and remained unharmed. They flayed them, beat them with iron rods, set them on red-hot beds, and poured sulfur on their bodies. All this failed to harm the saints, and they were sent to Tarsus for new tortures. In the wilderness along the way, St. Clement had a revelation that he would suffer a total of 28 years for Christ. Then, having endured a multitude of tortures, the saints were locked up in prison. St. Acathangelus was beheaded with the sword on November 5th. The Christians of Ancyra freed St. Clement from prison and took him to a cave church. There, after celebrating liturgy, the saint announced to the faithful the impending end of the persecution and his own martyrdom. On January 23rd, the Holy Hierarch was killed by soldiers from the city who stormed the church. The saint was beheaded as he stood before the altar and offered the bloodless sacrifice. Two deacons, Christopher and Charlton, were beheaded with him, but no one else was harmed. St. Gennadius of Kostroma in New Bimograd, in the world Gregory, was born in the city of Modulov into a rich family. 
From an early age, he displayed love for the church, and his frequent visits to monasteries evoked the dismay of his parents. Gregory, however, was firmly resolved to devote himself to God, and changing into tattered clothing, he secretly left his parental home and journeyed to Moscow. He visited the holy places in Moscow, but he did not find it suitable in spirit, and so set out to the Novgorod region. The destiny of the future ascetic was decided by an encounter with St. Alexander of Sphere, commemorated on August 30th. With his blessing, Gregory went to the Vologda forest, to St. Cornelius of Comel, commemorated on May 19th, and was tonsured by him with the name Gennadius. Together with St. Cornelius, Gennadius moved on to the Kostroma forest. Here on the shores of Lake Sura, in about the year 1529, there emerged the monastery of the Transfiguration of the Lord, afterwards called the Gennadiev Monastery. Having become Igumen, St. Gennadius did not slack in his monastic efforts, and together with the brethren, he went out to the monastery tasks. He chopped wood, carried firewood, made candles, and baked prosphora. He also wore heavy chains. One of his favorite tasks was the painting of icons, with which he adorned his new monastery. For his holy life, St. Gennadius received from the Lord the gift of clairvoyance and wonderworking. Journeying to Moscow in monastic affairs at the house of the nobleman Roman Zakharin, the saint predicted to his daughter Anastasia that she would become Tsaritsa. Indeed, Tsar Ivan Terrible chose her as his wife. The life of St. Gennadius was written by his disciple Igumen Alexis between the years 1584 to 1587. In it was inserted his spiritual testament, dictated by St. Gennadius himself. In it he commands the monks to observe the monastery rule, to toil constantly, to be at peace with everyone, and to preserve the books collected at the monastery, while striving to understand their meaning. He said, Strive towards the light and shun the darkness. St. Gennadius died on January 23, 1565, and was glorified by the Church on August 19, 1646. The main feast of St. Theoctistus is December 23rd. He was glorified in 1664 because of the miraculous healings which took place at his relics. In 1786, the relics of the saint were transferred to Yuriev, where Archimandrite Photios built a chapel in his honor at the local cathedral. St. Salamanes the Silent was a native of the city of Capersana, near the river Euphrates. Having found a cave near the banks of the river, he lived there as a hermit in silence and asceticism. Learning of his exalted life, the bishop of Capersana wanted to ordain him to the holy priesthood, but the Hesychas would not answer him with even a single word. The holy ascetic did not break his silence, conversing with the Lord alone. The Orthodox Church venerates him as the first saint to have taken upon himself the exploit of silence, which he continued to his very end. St. Paulinus, the merciful Bishop of Nola, was descended from an aristocratic and wealthy family of Bordeaux in France. By virtue of his extensive education and upbringing, the twenty-year-old youth was chosen to become a Roman senator. Later, he became consul and finally governor of the region of Campania in Italy. At 25 years of age, he and his wife were converted to Christ and were baptized. After this, he completely changed his manner of life. He disposed of all his property and distributed the money to the needy, for which he endured the scorn of his friends and servants. Not having children of their own, the pious couple adopted poor orphans and raised them in the fear of God. In his searchings for a secluded life, St. Paulinus went to the Spanish city of Barcelona. News of his ascetic life spread about, and in 393 they asked him to be ordained as a priest. Soon he left Spain and went on to the city of Nola in Italy, where he was elected bishop. When the Vandal barbarians invaded Italy and carried off many people to Africa in captivity, St. Paulinus used church funds to ransom the captives. However, he did not have enough money to ransom the son of a certain poor widow from slavery in the household of the prince of the Vandals. So he volunteered to take his place. Dressed as a slave, St. Paulinus began to serve the Vandal prince as a gardener. Soon his identity was revealed to the ruler, King Riga, in a dream. Not only did he receive his own freedom, but he also won the release of all the other prisoners from Campania and returned home with them. St. Paulinus is known both as a builder of churches and as a Christian poet. Among his many virtues, his love for mankind and his compassion for the poor and needy deserve special mention. He died at 78 years of age on June 22, 431, 
32 of his poems and 51 of his letters survive. They contain various moral discourses filled with deep piety. His relics are in Rome in the Church of the Holy Apostle Bartholomew. The Sixth Ecumenical Council was convened by the Emperor Constantine Pogonatos, 668 to 685, at Constantinople in the year 681 to combat the Monothelite heresy. 171 Holy Fathers were present who affirmed the doctrine of two wills in Jesus Christ, the divine and the human. This council was followed by another council in the year 691, called the Council in Trullo. This council addressed certain practical matters, and 102 canons were promulgated. On January 23rd, we commemorate the synaxis of the saints of Kostroma, which include St. Abramius of Gali, or Chukloma Lake, commemorated on July 20th, St. Adrian of Monza, commemorated on May 5th, St. Alexander of Gali, Abbot of Voshe, commemorated on March 27th, St. Barnabas, Abbot of Arluga, commemorated on June 11th, St. Cyril of New Lake, commemorated on February 4th and November 7th, St. Cyril of White Lake, commemorated on June 9th, St. Dionysius, Archbishop of Suzdal, commemorated on June 26th and October 15th, St. Gennadius, Abbot of Kostroma, commemorated on August 19th, St. Gregory of Pelshry, Wonderworker of Vologda, commemorated on September 30th, St. James of Brilev, commemorated on April 11th, St. James of Galich Monastery, commemorated on April 4th and May 30th, St. James of Zelizno-Borovsk, commemorated on April 11th and May 5th, St. Jonah Metropolitan of Moscow, commemorated on March 31st and May 27th, and June 15th. St. Macarius, Abbot of Zeltovod and Unza, commemorated on July 25th. St. Macarius of Bisma Monastery, commemorated on January 10th. St. Metrophanes, Bishop of Zoronez, commemorated on August 7th, September 4th, and November 23rd. St. Pahomius, Abbot of Nerecta, commemorated on March 21st and May 15th. St. Paisius, Abbot of Gali, commemorated on May 23rd. St. Paul of Omnora, commemorated on January 10th and October 7th, and St. Therapon of Monza, commemorated on May 27th and December 1st.